The Marcellus Shale prospecting frenzy spread from northern Pennsylvania into upstate New York in the summer of 2008. Landmen were at the door offering residents vast sums for mineral rights. Townsfolks wanted answers about what shale gas development would look like, and they turned to their elected officials. As emails, letters, and phone calls poured into her office in Binghamton in the summer of 2008, New York State Assemblywoman Donna Lepardo arranged a public meeting with the Farm Bureau and the Department of Environmental Conservation to address them. At the meeting, the DEC was represented by Linda Collert, Regional Supervisor with the Division of Mineral Resources. The panel also included Lindsay Wickham, representing the Farm Bureau, and Mike Brownell of the Susquehanna River Basin Commission, a regulatory body that oversees regional water issues. They sat in front of several hundred residents who packed the public hall beyond capacity. Suburbanites, farmers, and officials from town, county, and state governments. Collard ran through a PowerPoint presentation of how Marcellus development would proceed. She paused on a slide showing a lush meadow of wildflowers and grasses with a bank of trees in the background. This was a reclaimed natural gas site, she said, and an example of the expected long-term impact from shale gas development. The crowd was skeptical. People fired questions at the panel before Collard's presentation was over. A person in back stood up and asked how local emergency responders could prepare for a spill, fire, or explosion when the industry did not fully disclose the complete chemical content and concentration of fracking fluids. Collard looked at other members of the panel to see if anybody might want to take a crack at that one. They looked back at her expectantly. We don't expect any significant emergencies, she said after a pause. These things are rare. Another person stood up and asked how regulators were preparing for an influx of drilling that would exceed any historical comparison. Collard responded, We have been doing fine so far. No problems. She returned to her PowerPoint and was interrupted again by a person who noted that incentives for roadside dumping would go up as waste increased faster than options for treatment. How would the agency handle that? You have landowners out there. You have neighbors out there, Collard said. We would hear about it. Hopefully, the operators will be responsible. More questioning along the same lines followed her presentation, and she delivered the same answers. Flowback is classified as an industrial waste and therefore requires a permit for transport, she said again. And again came a question, where does it go? I can't answer that, she said. It's all regulated, she added. The response to Collard's performance represented broad skepticism of the agency's ability to understand much less govern the impending gas rush. Given the political stakes, the sums of money, and the public interest in the matter, the office of Governor Patterson was keenly tuned to these and other complaints coming from local and state representatives. He was guided in these affairs by his top environmental advisor, Judith Ink. Unlike rank and file members of the DEC, Ank had a background in activism with the New York Public Interest Research Group before her days in government. Following the reaction to Collard in the Binghamton area, Ank personally attended the next meeting in the region on behalf of New York Governor Patterson. In an interview prior to the event, she told me the state would need resources to provide oversight of the shale gas development and that its impact on water was a pressing concern. During the event, in sharp contrast to Collard's previous reassurances, she admitted to the crowd that the DEC did not have all the answers, and she was grateful for their input to, in her phrasing, hold the agency's feet to the fire. 